The walk along the Wales coast path from Berry Island to the beach just south of Flintwood Major is about 15 miles. And while earlier sections of the path were either in or in close proximity to urban centres like Newport and Cardiff, this is the first section of the path that strays away from built up areas. So of course, it might not feel like that if planes are landing at Cardiff International Airport or when walking past Aberta Power Station just after you leave Barrie. But after that, things really open up along this section of the Wales Coast Path, known here as the Glamorgan Heritage Coast. This is where rolling countryside runs up to steep cliffs and the spectacular seashore with interesting rock formations, a wide range of birds and beaches. Looking across to Somerset and Devon over there in England, which is about blah 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 miles away, I don't know. And the ever widening Severn Estuary became the Bristol Channel after Lavernock, seen in the last episode. Well, at least according to the folks at the International Hydrographic Organization, in case any water nerds are watching. We decided to rate this part of the Wales Coast Path as worthy of pub lunches all round in Landwood Major. The only tricky part was which pub? We settled on the coziness of the Old Swan Inn, originally built in the 12th century, when a pint probably cost half a duck, and we weren't disappointed. If you're driving through the Vale of Glamorgan to get down to the coast, you should check maps beforehand, or keep your eyes peeled for signs pointing out places of historic or archaeological interest like this. that I've never really been a fan of the posed earnestness of some travel show. So I'll just say that if rocks sticking out of the ground floats your boat, then uh, there's literally tons of them lying around Wales. <laughs> I know I'm seven episodes in because I'm doing this voiceover in post-production. Um, if you're wondering what, what kind of Welsh birds those are, they're not. And there's someone hammering something. Um, <laughs> so speaking of post-production, check this out. Right then, some post-production stuff. I used a 12 megapixel ultra compact uh, camera with a CMOS sensor and five times zoom, which fits in my back pocket. And when I graduated from the Algonquin College School of Media and Design 10 years ago, a uh, camera battery wouldn't have fit in my pocket. If you're not familiar with that type of camera, uh, it looks like this. Just one of these little point and shoot puppies. This camera doesn't have a mic jack, so I brought along a voice recorder, but it's important to remember to always turn it on. Otherwise, you'll be spending your lunch breaks uh, re-recording your scripts as voiceovers in post-production. Take three. One of the ways of breaking the Wales Coast Path up into more manageable pieces is by taking the train. Once I recorded it, I downloaded it onto my computer, and now I'm just editing the sound, and I'll put this up from two different takes and I'll uh, cut it that's where I want to put it and I'll paste that in so the whole thing now runs like this the other thing I forgot to do was to check the schedule if you're interested in doing a similar project but with your own material you can take online tutorials to teach you about video editing software I took some uh, workshops at Saw Video here in town uh, and um, yeah, you can do it. You can have a lot of fun too. This is a point and shoot camera with a video feature as opposed to a camcorder, which is a dedicated video camera. Uh, and that's not to knock it at all. It's done really well. Um, it's just to say that I've really, really pushed it to its limits. <clears throat> if I get the chance to do part two from Flantwet up to Swansea and then around the Gower and part three from Clanetley up to uh, White Sands Bay west of St. David's, I'll upgrade to a camcorder because it's got more functions and features and uh, it also ensures that the picture quality is maintained when it's uploaded. Which brings me to the end of this episode, number seven, and the last installment of part one. But walking away along the banks of the Rideau River in eastern Ontario doesn't seem fitting. It was just as well I planned things and learned about stuff like slow crossfades on, so I can actually walk away along the banks of the Ueni near Ogmore by Sea in the Vale of Glamorgan. Thanks for watching and happy walking.